Sonia Boko from Rainbow Balloons. Have you forgotten about me? <laughs> because I sure haven't forgotten about you. But it has been a bit of a hot minute, hasn't it, since you and I last had a chat. Now, I'm looking forward to sharing with you a balloon twisting tutorial today. But before we get into it, I want to take a little bit of a look back down memory lane of what 2019 looked like for me. And go! <laughs> Okay, that's me pretending that there's going to be some kind of deadly montage there, but actually there's not because that stuff is a bit too tricky to edit and I am looking forward to sharing with you this video and the sooner the better because like I said, it's been a while. <laughs> now, for me, 2019 was amazing. I had so many great opportunities and experiences and pretty much all thanks to balloons. So I could never have imagined that when I started this hobby about 10 or so years ago, where it might take me to. But 2019 was great for many reasons for me, but the biggest, one of the biggest was having the amazing opportunity to teach a balloon twisting workshop over in Queensland uh, for the evening with great thanks to Jazz Trading and Qualitex, two amazing businesses and one of which, wink wink Qualitex, <laughs> if I didn't have them I wouldn't be wearing today with balloons because of their product which is of course balloons. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, there's that. The other thing was, well one of the other things, let's face it there was a couple, was being on Australia's Got Talent. I know right, if you don't know, if you didn't know, guess what I was and I'm going to pop a link just below this video so if you wanted to and it's not region locked but I think it is to Australia sorry uh, you can watch it online um, so that link is going to be down below and check it out after the video but <coughs> so there was the amazing experience of teaching that Queensland workshop thank you so much for everyone who did attend that if you happen to be watching I also chose to get talent, but I also created some content for the Balloon Artist College, some drawing of balloons, artwork style, and I also had some other online teaching opportunities, which was great to be a part of. And in saying that, I hope to be able to bring you more content here in 2020, and I might be doing some other projects, but watch this space, I'll be sure to tell you about them should they happen. Okay. I'm sure you're here to see a balloon twisting tutorial, so let's get into it. Hmm. <laughs> now I have a Facebook page which is the Rainbow Balloons Learning and Resource Centre. If you haven't visited there before, I'm going to pop a link below. I encourage you to join me, come on over and what it is, is basically a place where I can share and connect with you through Facebook and now and then I'll do some live videos, probably overdue to do one actually. I share when I do new clip art. Um, I put in requests for design ideas of what you might like to see. So that's not often, but that is why we're here today. To help get me back into the swing of things, I put out the question. Hey guys, what would you like to see a tutorial on? And I got a few really great responses. And I chose one, which at the time I read it, like, what is that? Go to Google. Google told me that a fly agaric is a good luck mushroom. Actually, the person mentioned that too, but I was not comprehending the words I was reading in the mind. Good luck mushroom, fly agaric. What is this? It's something like this. A cute little toadstool or the good luck mushroom. So I know there's uh, been a few designs out there which are beautiful and I encourage you to see them too. And like uh, this mushroom is, uses a bit of distortion techniques. So when I came up with how I was going to present this design to you, I thought about uh, the factors that are important to me, so the cute factor, and I wanted to have some of that distortion in the shape which you can see a little bit in the stem here. And of course, <laughs> in the dome or cap part of your good luck mushroom. By the way, if I'm saying fly agaric incorrectly, let's face it, I probably am. Feel free to correct me. And Hydran, thank you for making this suggestion of the balloon that I would share with you today. <laughs> okay, so 
Let's get to it. How do we make this fly agaric, this good luck mushroom? We are going to use five balloons. What we have are two five inch rounds, two one sixties, and a two sixty. Now, the other tool I'm going to use is my Legenda pump, which is wonderful for doing uh, distortion techniques, especially on the smaller scale. So it's more recommended for balloon twisters as opposed to decor designs because you don't want to overwork this uh, little legend or Legenda. Hmm? But it is fabulous for times when you need both your hands to be manipulating the balloon and not. Uh, worrying about trying to prevent air from escaping whilst you are doing other activities with your balloon. What I'm going to do is start with one of the five inch rounds and it's in the red colour and I'm going to take a 160 and I'm folding it in half oh sorry not in half just folding it over just enough, pretty much that it is going to be inserted into the nozzle neck of your balloon. And you can keep doing that until you feel it reach the end. So what I'm going to do, it's just a little slightly off camera as I use my legenda, is inflate air into the five inch round. As I'm letting the air go in, this bit of nozzle I make sure is still peeking out because I'm going to now inflate that and do my best not to let the other air inside the red round to come out. Now if, if you're not used to it, it might take a couple of goes at first, but if you're able to insert the nozzle end of the 160 over your pump while it's got a little bit of playroom there. if it's butted up really close to the base of that, it can make it a little bit more difficult to then insert this on here without letting the air escape from there. But I'm going to do that. I'm going to put this over the pump of my legenda, uh, sorry, the nozzle, the air valve, and insert air into there. What I'm going to allow it to do is inflate inside until I can feel it hit back on my fingers on the inside. I'm just going to show you feeding it on a bit like this. So I'm just pushing the Legenda button a little bit at a time, not too much, so it fills up, but I'm still more in control because if you go a bit wild, it's going to start going whoosh, really quickly, making things happen fast, and it might be a little bit overwhelming if you're not. Uh, I guess using that kind of technique. What I'm going to do now is I want to let some of the air inside the 160 out. If some of the two, uh, the five inch round escapes too, that's fine. Because in the end it's all going to come out. So look through your balloon. <laughs> it is an opaque balloon, but there still is a degree of transparency to it. So I can see what my 160 looks like inside. I'm going to let go of the nozzle of the five inch round, holding on to the 160 still. You can see how it's flattened out. It almost looks like an individual flower petal. I'm just going to do a double knot. To prevent the air from escaping my 160. I'm going to use the cutter on my Legenda to remove the excess, that is the nozzle and the remaining part of the 160 balloon. So, and I'm just going to let that go. That's going inside. So next, I'm going to reinflate this five inch round, but not too much because once I've got the air in, I'm going to manipulate the position of that 160 inside the balloon so that it is, instead of going up and down where the nozzle is. It's going to go in this sort of direction with the nozzle up underneath. 
But let me show you that. That's the technical tricky part. So I've just inflated my five inch round again. And I don't think you yeah, don't think you can capture it. But inside we've got the round 160, just sort of floating in the middle. I'm going to start laying the air out on my round. But in on the inside, my fingers are kind of touching there, they're on either side of that 160 loop. But as I'm letting this air out. Just trying to control it so I've got the nozzle coming out the base part here. Just like that. <laughs> okay, I <laughs> welcome back. So just quickly pause the video because I really had to get a drink of water. <laughs> so let's get back into it. So I have inserted the balloon onto this uh, chopstick and it's going to go inside the nozzle of the five inch round. Bindi your body as you need to to help get that inside but what I'm going to do now is inflate the inner balloon not the outer one just the inner one because I want to get a little bit of rounded distortion here and earlier it, it was recommended or I would fully recommend inflating that five inch round to allow that 160 space to move but we don't need to do the same consideration for this five inch round inside on this occasion. So, because we kind of like the shape that we're seeing here, but now we are going to add that extra dimension or the dome part by inflating just the five inch round on the inside. So just to show you a bit better here, getting that on the nozzle. You can see what an interesting shape it's making there. It almost reminds me of an acorn out of the Mario Brothers franchise. <laughs> but hey, that's a video for a different day. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is allow the air for that five inch round on the inside to escape. And I'm just going to hold it against my body as I let the air go out to try and encourage more the air to be exiting in the manner which I wish. Pushing it on my body uh, can help, but I'm just using the uh, manipulation of my hand on that balloon to push the 160 more to the base of the round inside. You can go ahead and tie all that as one. Well. Now at this point it kind of reminds me of one of the Turtle Brothers or the Cooper shells from Mario. <laughs> Can you tell I love Mario? Because I do. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So we've got our little dome or mushroom cap. Isn't it so cute? <laughs> Let's get onto the stem. For this I'm going to use two white balloons, one 160 and a 260. I'm going to start by inflating the 160. So I'm going to make basically a five petal flower but with pinch twists. So that's a one and a half or so finger bubble. Pinch twisting. And I just want to have a series of five. It's basically a small flower, which is also really cute as ring. So we've got our little flower shape. So we can go ahead to remove the excess. I'm going to tie that off. <laughs> Make a really cute ring if you've not tried that before. Now I'm going to take my 260. What I want to do is I'm going to use the blade on my legenda to cut this off. You can of course use a pair of scissors, but I just want to have approximately a hand width that's about five, uh, 
just over two inches, which is just over five centimeters. a small little bit and I'm going to inflate that and I'm going to back it off quite a bit because I want it to be fairly soft <laughs> until I've got a size it's a bit bigger than my hand and I'm going to tie it off in case I do just allow a little bit of Softness in the balloon. Basically, we've got an uninflated little bit at the end. That's enough for us to squish and shape this little stem of the mushroom a little bit. Give it some interest. If you can, try to encourage the bottom end to be a bit more bulbous through how you are manipulating that latex. That looks quite nice. Then we are going to put this on there too. Or oh, when I say we're going to, what I find gives the best connection is taking this knot, oh, well, this nozzle and this nozzle, tie them together. gap between the two. We could go ahead to use a cutter or scissors to remove that bulky excess. Which I'm going to do, which I did, which is that just now. And now I'm going to take that five inch, five inch, that five petal balloon, just opening up a bit of a space so I can insert it in that gap. Area. What you can do, take the two pinch twists that you put in between and wrap them around each other. This would be for me these two here. Help to lock it in place to ensure that this isn't going to pop out. So one of the char characteristics of a fly agaric or good luck mushroom is, I think, a fairly either long or stout, I guess either, either either, I like to look at the more stout ones, stem, followed by a dome cap, which is quite flat, but also in saying flat, it's got a bit of that dome shape to it. couple of different examples but then what you could go ahead of course to do is draw on your spots. Now the white Posca paint marker is my preferred <laughs> the lid fell off and that's okay. My preferred marker for drawing on white details so shine from eyes or uh, a smile. But I'm just going to randomly, as I might, pop some white spots. Good luck on making it look random. I hope you enjoyed this good luck mushroom and I wish you the best of luck in giving the design a go. So. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you tuning in and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Until next time, have a great day and I'll talk soon. <laughs> See ya.